Yeah, I was oh, just gonna watch. Oh, I, thought, I thought that was you saying I could help out as well. Who was the who's that? that was, no, uh, that I, was, yeah, that I was me. Help. My oh. in-game name is Hershey Skirt. I will type it out for you. Just a moment. I I could help uh, if needed. Well, we I think we only need uh, one more person. I'd like yeah, to if really Spanier really this year as well. You already got me. Okay, added. So well, actually, I think Spanier. we're probably probably good in, if we just just the three of us in that case. Streams left. Let me test. I put it test. in uh, Dojo General. I do as well, and we can show off ganks as well in case that way we can get. Okay. Everything's Ooh, working. I'm back. Freeze and checked. And I'll be right back. Accepting. Okay. I was invited to send. I'll set up a. Just then we'll go into we'll do what we're doing then then oh, like harbor is the normal spot, isn't it? <sighs> so, <sighs> we're now we we'll put on renowned full so you can show feats. Yes. This one. Okay. Oh uh whenever you already said do you get my invite Barrack? Oh, I'll check right now. Okay. We'll probably wait a minute or two before we start. Um, and then you can stream to Discord. Uh, share your stream on Discord, and then we'll have... And then Stag will stream that on to... to um, what do call it? Wait, I'll, I'll stream on Discord. Yeah, yeah, so we can... Can you stream on Discord, please? I, I'm on a hotspot. No, right. my my, okay. my CPU on, doesn't do that, yeah. doesn't allow me. Uh, I can do it. Spanner, it's Spanner can do it. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, you're in. Um, move into on your moving uh, around. Yeah. Back to being hotspot gaming. <laughs> Where are you again, Barrack? Netherlands? In Netherlands, yeah. Oh, let's you Do you speak on, uh, English uh, a lot there? Yeah, yeah. Learn a little bit of okay. Uh, I didn't learn any Dutch, but everyone speaks English perfectly. Okay, you're good. Who do you want me to play? Um, we can really go anybody. It's Barak is the probably one more Berserker on the enemy team would be good. I'll go Zerk in that case. So you can go whichever oh. fancy. Okay, that's fine. And um, I'll take. Tier two, the new, so then we've got. Okay, um, and we're live, so we can start whenever, really, I guess. Um, when we load up, I'll start streaming. We've got a good number of people in voice chat. Remember, if you are uh, just watching and you just want to. Uh, watch and don't want to ask questions and stuff. It's best if you watch on Twitch rather than in Discord because the number of people in the in the voice chat uh, affects the quality of the of the stream, unfortunately. So uh, I'd recommend if you don't want to ask questions and stuff, pop into Twitch. And obviously, you can ask questions in the Twitch chat, which I'll pop up now so I can see it. Um, <coughs> you right, or right, in okay. Dojo. In the like the do in the dojo general voice chat that kind of stuff, or in dojo voice text. Okey dokey. Right, start streaming. Share screen. All right, I'm back. One. Oh, I can try going up to one eight what ten eighty p. Let me know if it if the if it's really atrocious, and I'll drop down to seven twenty. We'll give it a go. Yeah. So what else that can happen, right? I'll just have to redo it. Oh. We'll Is that see. okay? We'll see. <clears throat> All right. We have feet. Well. It's a PowerPoint fiesta. Make a I think it's. I think it'll what, be um... somewhat watchable, though. What's that, Stag? I think it'll be somewhat watchable. I'm not sure. We'll see. Oh, so it's not very good? 
Uh, the usual. Well, I'll drop down to um, I'll drop down to seven gold in that case. Yeah. Well, you didn't have to end it. Uh, well, I I don't know how. You click on the. You're really, on the really quiet, screen button. I can't hear you at all. So. I'll fix that. Sorry. Still funny. Um, Is that better? Yeah. Oh, that's better. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. So, Barak, take it away. All right. Well, first of all, hello everyone. Welcome to How to Berserker on from Dojo. Um, so, first of all, I would like to mention that what I'm going to say, like this guide I'm going to make, is is a bit more advanced. I am already assuming you know the Berserker move set. Like this is not necessarily a basic guide. This is more advanced things I do at high level that could give you a minor advantage. And I will say as many things I came up with for this, I don't really know how to structure a guide. I tried to make something and I hope you guys can learn uh, from it. All right, first, uh, first I'll start with pros and cons about Berserker. Uh, what, what is he good at? What is he bad at? So you get a better understanding of the character. Also, I'd like to mention that uh, with this guide, I'm already assuming that the OS changes are in place since they're coming next Thursday. So uh, we'll, we'll just try to theorize how it's going to be with OS changes. But uh, as you can obviously assume, he's going to be much better after option selects get removed. So yeah, let's start with the pros and cons. First of all, the best thing you're going to notice about Berserker, first thing you pick him up, is that he's an amazing 1v1 -er. probably one of the best and one thing that is very important and uh, matters a lot in dominion is that he can kill extremely fast he has a very good time to kill especially especially if his offense is going his way you can absolutely destroy someone in like 10 20 seconds second thing that is very good at and is very important in the meta is that he has very good chase meaning that his enemies cannot run away as easily it's always appreciated to have very good chase, especially because not a lot of characters in the game have good chase. So whenever a character has, he's gonna stand out. Uh, he's one of the best anti gang. Sorry? No, I'm just saying to I'm gonna try and demonstrate some of the things you're talking about oh. whilst you're doing them. All right, he's uh, it's one of the best anti gankers. So, so another thing that. He's uh, known for, he's like very flashy, a lot of YouTubers play him to anti-gank, so yeah, he has also, there are like two types of anti-gankers, there's like the anti-ganker that can stall a lot, uh, for example Warlord, like Warlord, yes, he's, he can, it's very hard to kill him, but if he gets revenge, you cannot really do much, you cannot really kill people because of your headbutt, they can GP you and you get into recoveries. No, Berserker is different. Berserker is an anti-ganker that has big potential to kill enemies in revenge. Like, once you get a revenge, you can actually uh, do a lot, a lot of damage. Another pros, pro he has is that he has a makeshift gank that uh, is not is not so powerful, but it's better than nothing. It's He has another ability in his tool set. Uh, it's second, especially good. One second, he's saying it's very bad quality on Twitch. Um, Blitz, would you prefer trying to stream? Is it my is it my Discord stream or is it the Twitch setting off that's bad? Uh, I can try to I can try to stream, but I, my CPU might be able to it might mess up. I'll try it. Though. It's actually somewhat alright. So think... Okay, which ones is it good on? Let me let me check it. Let's. Yeah, one. Well, yeah, Freeze, just, Freeze just said it's fine. We're not gonna try anything. We'll just stick with right. Freeze. Sorry, Blitz. Uh, no, it, no, it's not you, Timo. <laughs> no, it's not Timo this time. Yeah, uh, people are saying it's uh, it's it's fine. Freeze said, said it too, so I'll. Okay, well, I'll keep on streaming my viewpoint anyway. Yeah. So you I'm, can switch it back and forth. I'm gonna see. switch. I'm gonna, I'm um, gonna stay to span. I'm, uh, stay with span. I'm not gonna try anything out right now. All right. Um, yeah, you continue, please. Okay, sorry. Please, right. please carry on, Barak. Thank you. Uh, I was talking about his makeshift gank, yeah. and he said it's not so powerful, but can come useful from time to time. You and show it the yeah, 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 of course. Uh, I will talk more about it later, though. But you can show it right now if you want. So, uh, 
and that is the gag. The second part is a bit uh, improvised, but the important part is that if a damage is, you can zone, you get full damage on the zone, there's no damage reduction, and uh, of that zone, you have enough hit stun for your teammate to get another heavy. And as you can see, afterwards you can improvise, you can go for a second heavy, and you can try to confirm it somehow. I try to confirm it if I like. Right, moving on. He has hyper armor, which allows you to trade in teamfights. It's, uh, it's very important. It's very good that he has hyper armor. You'll see a lot of characters with hyper armor can just be a bit more forgiving in teamfights. Like, you can attack and not really know what you're doing and still do damage and trade. But it's also very risky, and I will get into that later. He has an amazing deflect that has very good legend potential. Definitely not to be underestimated. Like, uh, I, I said this a lot of times, but I think Berserker is uh, one of the better ledgers in the game. Probably, like, even in top 5. Throwing a top heavy blitz. I'll try and do my best to... Yeah, as you can see, it gets a GB, and with a GB, you can throw people. He has a very good tier 3 and tier 4. That synergizes well with other feats as well. He has good dodge attack that... Uh, can be unlocked slash target swapped. And another good thing that he has going, uh, which is a bit special, is that he has a very good stamina pool. He has, if I'm correct, 160 or 140, no, 160 stamina, I think. Am I correct, Spanner? Um, I can't remember, actually. I think it's, um, I think it's only, you know, I can't remember. Um, I'll, I'll it's fine. <laughs> it's still more than the average, like significantly more. Um, so basically, with the stamina as well, he, and with his moveset, obviously, he's definitely promoted as a, a ruthless attacker, like, non-stop attacking. And, that, and that's the thing, that's the thing. Berserker has very good offense, uh, but you have to learn how to manage to keep the control of the fight, so you are the one applying your superior offense and making sure that you don't allow your enemies to take advantage of your inferior defense and inferior HP and inferior guard. So it's especially in duels, it's about managing this ratio between your offense and enemy offense, and you want to be always as offensive as possible against the points. All right, now I said the good stuff against him, I'm gonna say the bad stuff against him. So first thing that you're gonna notice is that he has uh, lower health. I mean, not necessarily first thing, first thing could probably be a reflex card, Second thing would be low health. He has 120 HP, and he has uh, he has Fury that buffs his HP. I mean his defense, but uh, until Fury, he doesn't really have HP, and he doesn't even have a way to heal very well. Like for example, Shaman has low HP, but she can heal herself, and yeah, that, that is a problem. Especially because you have an identity, or you're supposed to have an identity as a trader. But how can you really trade when you're Opponents have more HP, well, we have to be more smart about it, obviously. Um, second thing, as I said, Reflex card. Uh, well, Reflex card, we all know it's bad. <laughs> it's a con he has, you have to learn how to use it, and it's going to be a bit of a pain in the ass in team fights. that's why I like to prefer to be a bit more agile with him and dodge attack as much as possible, and try to... Not necessarily rely on my guard as much. Like I don't, I don't want people. I want, don't want to be necessarily in range to be having to rely on my guard because a lot of times it's not gonna, it's gonna fail for me. It's not gonna work out because it can drop really easily. And like let's say one in five heavies or six heavies, you just get hit randomly because your guard fell off. And that happens often. So be careful with it. He has assassin renown, which is probably gonna change soon. Like we had the TG announcement uh but still in the game right now so we have to mention it he gets renowned the least on anything except uh kills and contesting a point and specifically the most important one is that he only gives five defended renown on uh, on a kill yeah like yeah. on a defended kill which is very important defended yeah. renown is a big part of uh of renown gain in high level and a lot of strategy uh, or strategies are based around defended renown. So him giving less renown for everyone is a very big deal. If you guys can hop off the point quickly, um, me, me and me and Hershey will capture it. I, I don't think we have to show it though. Oh, I know. I like to have visual demonstration of things. And then if I just kill um, Blitz, 
Okay, you look at look at five, and you can see, uh, yeah. And then if we kill, and if uh, Hershey, you kill Barrack. So that's and that's twenty five for Vanguard. Keep in mind. So in theory, you want the Vanguard to always get elasted, if possible. All right. Uh, next thing. It's hard for him to finish people off, especially. Because one thing that you can do against Berserker, and you will notice, like if you pick up Berserker at a high level, you'll notice it will be a big pain in your ass, is people external dodging away from you. And there's not really much you can do about it. Right, so like uh blitz. Um, of course. Um let me oh, yeah. let me do it. So usually the way I would start offense is like like this. Like right now I'm doing so no. Block this one and then try to dodge my unblockable. You have to be locked on Blitz, oh, yeah. that's external dodging. Well, I, I got this one, but usually a lot of the times it whiffs. I bet. See, just like that. And a lot of people, and it, not, not even that, just try to dodge away from me, like I'm trying to catch up to you. Like it, it's it's so hard to catch him right now. Maybe if I get a lucky GB, but obviously he doesn't have to spam dodges like that. It's just an example. He's, he has a hard time chasing people. And if you watch high-level scrims, you'll notice that a lot of enemies just, when I play Berserker, just try to external me in teamfights and dodge away. And there was not much I can do because he doesn't have the tools to deal with it. Um, all right. Next thing is he has, as a con, he has the risky playstyle. This character is one of the more inconsistent ones. Uh, for example, he, I said he's a very good anti-ganker, but at the same time, you can also just die in one, two GBs. And since you like to dodge attack a lot and just attack a lot in anti-ganks, it's easy to get a GB from time to time. But he can also win it easily. Like, he can die in one second or he can win it easily. So I see it a bit as inconsistent, like, this is, for example, compared to someone like Warlord, where I just go in the point, I know I have a lot of HP, I know I have Juggernaut, I know I have Fury, I can survive there. I cannot win it, but I cannot lose it instantly, as I do with Berserker. So that's what I mean with inconsistent. Yeah, he's not, he's a high skill, flaw character, you have to, you have to play yeah, very yeah. well to get good results. Um, also wanted to mention that he, in one v ones he might be somewhat easy to play and do well with. In four v four, you have to pick up a little. You have to, you have to actually learn how to play the character. So you, and if you don't, you're gonna be punished easily by the players that know what they're doing. Did you All right. The tier two beats. Uh, I have not. Okay, so another thing that he has is he has very good fits. Except for his tier two, and as right now in a meta where fits not not this meta, but always fits matter so much, and the fact that he has like a pretty bad fit on tier two, like he has couple options. He has Doom Banner, which in theory is okay, but when you take into account that it takes like three seconds to place it, yeah, it's okay. and it's also static. Uh, I, it's not so well. It's not so good. Yeah, to get the most out of this one, Plus, people can just get out as well, yeah. obviously. You have to put it down before they are in range, and then if you do that, then it's, you know, they can just avoid it easily. Mm. Or if you put it down in the middle of a team fight, it, it makes you vulnerable for quite a long time. And of course, Bear Trap just sometimes might not get triggered at all. Yeah. Bear Trap can catch a lot by surprise. We can obviously have like very good places to put it in. For example, one of my favorites is in mid. Like, uh, especially I call out to my teammates here, I'm going to place the Bear Trap uh, and we're going to watch out for it. And if a player goes across to it, we have like a couple players going towards it and getting ready to one shot as soon as the Bear Trap hits. So the Bear Trap can sometimes get you one shot, sometimes it can be useless. But, uh, it's probably the best option he has right now. And he also has like a feed that gives you passive heal, but it's not really, really that good. It's kind of bad, if you ask me. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That, that. go ahead. 
Executioner's Respite is the replacement for his old um, revenge attacks, and it gives you yeah. 15 extra health on... Oh, it's like 50%, 10. I think. 50% on everything. 50% on every execution. But <laughs> if you're executing, you're often executing on a point, um, so it's you're going to be healing from that point anyway after the end of a team fight. And yeah. um, sometimes you will be executing... I mean, he has got quite a fast execution. I think I've got it set up if I can execute. 2,500 MS. Yeah. It's the Balkanheim one. But still, that will give you 12 more HP with this tier 2. Like, if, if, like compare this to something like Zan who's passive. You do 40% uh, more damage, you heal 12 more HP on execution. Like, that's horrible. That's so bad compared to any other meta tier, uh, tier 2 right now. Yeah, so not really worth it. Um, so yeah, that's about it for the pros and cons section. Um, moving on. Uh, now I will talk a bit about his playstyles in teamfights, or at least the playstyles I see with him. There are two big ones that, uh, that I try to switch between, depending on the game mode. The first one is being very active and armor trading in teamfights. But thing is, this one is a bit risky and it has a bit of a higher ceiling to do because it is extremely easy to get into bad trades. Uh, one thing that can help you with this is like always doing external attacks. And the reason for it is because if you do an external attack, even if you hit someone, you still have the ability to dodge out of it. And dodge can cancels are very good in... Uh, in this game, because you can hit someone, and when someone else is trying to punish you, you can dodge out of it. Yeah, um, um, I can go. This playstyle is better for 2v2s, like 2v2s, specifically 2v2s, tournament 2v2s. It's good for 2v2s in Dominion as well, but you have to consider other things as well. Like, for example, is someone else coming in? Do I want to preserve this health? Do I just want to give all to win this team fight? It's, it's a bit, it has a bit more factor. And... Obviously, I don't really recommend it in big team fights. That, that can easily get you killed. Especially if, like, the meta right now with Jun Jung, Zan Hu, and all of heavy unblockables coming around the way, it's very easy to get into bad trades. And especially because it doesn't even have, like, significantly more damage than the people he's trading with. Like, it's good to... Let's say a good trade is, like, heavy with a light. But you're not always going to get that. You're usually going to get heavy with a zone, heavy with a... Heavy, probably. That's the most common one. You really get heavy for light. All right. This is now the second playstyle, the one I kind of play, and the one that uh, I think is better, especially for 3v4, is the chaser one. This playstyle implies that the berserker is more passive in team fights, and he is preservative of his health in order to have better opportunities to chase people fleeing from the fight or just rotating. With this playstyle, I usually just try to, you know, suppress an opponent in a team fight. Like I, I said, I'm passive, so I like just stay on the back, and I have one guy that I lock down. I try to suppress him. Like for example, I try to suppress John Jung. I don't want to let him do big unblockables on my team, so I just locked on him. If he does something, I can. I have super dodge attack with insane range. I can jump on him. Uh, if not, I stay passive as well. I don't lose health. My team doesn't lose health because I suppressed him. A very powerful team fight, so that's a good way of keeping health and also being active passively in the in a team fight. Uh, and also, since the first thing I mentioned is that he's a very good duelist, especially with this matchup, I will often take opportunities to isolate from the team fight. Like just for example, in the beginning, I don't want to do the big team fight because I know I'm inferior at this. I know my good abilities are in 1v1s, I know my good abilities are in 1v2s, in 2v2s, but in 4v4s, the more players Berserker has to fight, the harder it gets for him. Like, 4v4 uh, is not his place to be. Uh, so what I do to do this is basically force opponents to take 1v1s or 2v2s with me. Specifically 1v1s. Like, for example, as soon as I see opportunity to push, I can push just because I forced one guy off me, off the team that is forced to fight me. If I force two, that's good. I have a 1v2, which I can be very good at, and my team has a 3v2. But usually, I, I don't really want to get into 1v2s that often. 
I usually just want to see if I can catch one guy and separate him and force him to fight me 1v1 because this way uh, I take Berserk, I took away Berserker from his uh, most inferior environment and put him in his best environment which is 1v1 and if possible I would also like to take a good team fighter like for example I would love to take John Jung in a 1v1 because I know I can win it I have positive match up and I know he's a Way better team player. Yeah. Uh, this can be done by pushing or fa faking a push on enemy point or just fighting off point. Like if if you see, let's say, for example, on Citadel, I a lot of times go on the that there's this right or left side uh, spot of in from mid. Like there's this I don't know open hallway I guess. Oh yeah, yeah. That that uh, I like to you know like push push into it. Maybe I have a reaction. Maybe an opponent tries to defend. Well, if he defends, I get into a one v one, which I like that. Yeah. So yeah, this is it for the chaser playstyle. As so I said, you want to preserve. On this point, if we were having a big team fight here, I could run up uh, out the top to threaten the drop attack. Someone would have to follow me to prevent that happening, and then I'm in a one v one with them. That kind of that kind of thing. Yeah, 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 but. In this, in this, uh, in this scenario specifically, I will probably just not chase you. Yeah. It's in scenarios like, for example, we're off the point, we're fighting in mid. Now I'm pushing this point that you own. You have to stop me. You cannot ignore me. Yeah. While when you went to plunge, I can just ignore you. Yeah. Um. So yeah, chaser, preserve HP, so you can push, and don't really get into big team fights because you know it's not good for you. This is the thing I recommend. Keep HP and get the best opportunities to push into 1v1s, 1v2s, and whatever you can catch. Alright, moving on. I will talk a bit about his duels. Uh, but the duels is very, very simple. Like, nothing really, really complicated. A lot of the, a lot of the game is, or characters in the game are very, very simple in duels. The true complexity comes in 44, but since it's an important topic, I will cover it as well. So, uh, in duels, you can either, you have like, first of all, the offense. The offense is the most important part that you need to know. You have uh, 400 MS lights and an unblockable. That is your offense. You don't really have much else. I mean, not one unblockable, two unblockables you have. So first, starting with the 400 the second slides, you have you can either commit to a heavy and have three uh, three directional light that deals a total of 17 damage if landed, five damage from the chip and 12 from the light. Uh, I think this is nine damage actually. It's nine, isn't it? No, it's 12. Uh, That's all. The open uh, the the faint lights are 11. And yeah, the chain lights mm. are nine. Oh, okay. Um, my bad. My bad. Eh? So in this case, it's fourteen damage if landed. Yeah. Apologies. No um. And the second option, the safer route, is to go fainter heavy into a four hundred millisecond light, but this only deals eleven damage, and more importantly, costs the uh, stamina. It costs. It costs one more faint of stamina. Yeah, that's ten more stamina versus. So if obviously if you know your opponent is not gonna really block those heavies, you can let them go for the extra chip damage. It's never bad, and because and it's not just the chip damage. It also gives you the option to heavy heavy, which leads to your unblockable to your forty four damage unblockable. So first thing that you will notice with Berserker after playing him a bit is that people will try to parry your lights. And for this, I, I'm, I'm trying, I want to give you some tips about it, but it's mostly about you adapting to this. And oh. uh, for example, on this specific scenario, is one way to adapt is to just throw heavies from time to time. Like, uh, for, ex for example, is if you know your opponent might parry your chain light after a blocked heavy, not necessarily specifically, but you know that he does from time to time. In order to counteract it, you from time to time 
not necessarily on a perfect way, but you can just implement it into your tool set with just heavy heavy. This way, is, this way, uh, promote him to parry less. And if he does parry and you catch him, you do 26 damage, and you have the insane option to ch chain into a 44 damage on Blockwood, which always is Argon. That's insane. That's very good offense you can have, you have right there. So even if they don't parry, chaining into heavy is very good. So I recommend you to do it like once in four or five times, maybe even regular, depending on the opponent. But just know that it is something very good in your tool set. Use it. And that's it. And that's about it in duels. Like not much else to say here. As I said, they're they're very basic. Now let's try to go into more interesting stuff about Berserker. For example, right now we will talk a bit about his anti-ganking potential. The thing he's maybe known for. So Berserker has a couple of tools to help him anti-gank pretty decently. One of the main ones is uh, the target swap dodge attack. So basically he has, on this dodge attack, he has very good hitbox, allowing you to hit multiple people or or just uh, just aiming it to hit people that you're not locked on. For example, you he see here, I am locked onto the Warlord. And while being locked on the Warlord, I try to attack Spaniard. And with this attack, it might seem like a normal dodge attack to Spaniard, but he cannot parry it. Here, yeah, try to parry it. It is unparryable. So this way, not everyone is gonna try to parry it. Obviously, people know about this, so they'll just block it. But if you block it, block it. I I do get to start my offense on him just because I got into this. So this is a really good uh, chain starter starter because it allows you to go into offense without being at risk of getting parried. You can be at risk of getting dodge attacked or dodge bashed or whatever, but you also have the option to attack afterwards with hyper armor. So that is not necessarily the safest option. It might force you into a bad trade, but you have options for options. You can also, uh, one more thing that works a lot is people wait for the indicator to dodge. They don't dodge when I see me dodge. They might try to avoid it by dodging like, like Spaniard will right now. So one thing to counteract this is just doing this. A lot of people dodge when they see the indicator, so I just heavy and faint into GP. Spaniard, it doesn't work on Spaniard because he's dodging on my dodge. Yeah, because I'm As you can see. <laughs> but if you, if you try to react to the indicator and only dodge when you see the indicator, this will hit him. And it hits a lot of people who try to dodge on the indicator, which is pretty much everyone on high level. Or that knows anything about Berserker and how to deal with him. Yeah, so pulled out there. So, so as I said, target swap dodge attack, very, very good too. Again, I, I'll i explain one more time. How do you perform this move? You have to be locked on someone else and... Oh, no, okay. Let me, let me re say, re say it. You aim to attack one opponent with your dodge attack and you input it while you are locked to another enemy that's uh, preferably far away so he cannot parry your attack. You have to also be careful. You can do this, but Spanner, come here. I can do the same thing. But since I'm close to Warlord, come closer. He can maybe parry it in one of these attempts. But oh, oh, okay. the wall is right behind me. In there. Yeah. So you have to be careful. Warlord, a lot of good players also do this to bait, like Warlord just will dodge ahead when he thinks I'm gonna dodge attack, and he might get a parry while I'm trying to do it. Yeah. All right. As I said, this is a chain starter, but be careful not to get parried. Yeah, because if you get parried, you can often eat two heavies. Or, or, or no, you eat more, you eat more. You eat 60 to 70 damage. So be careful not to get parried like this. If you get parried once, you almost throw the anti gang. Because uh, what will happen is you'll eat at least two heavies. And if the opponents are, are let's say, good at the game, you will eat another heavy because they will do a setup to confirm the fight heavy. Yeah. So that's 60, 70 plus damage on one parry. Be careful. 
Blitz, you can kill me, and then I can, can we can demonstrate that quickly. Um, I'll run in, and you can get. Well, I can be careless and get married and die. Um, if I may, there's one point that I wanted to bring up regarding that dodge attack where you're kind of clipping the person between you and the person you're locked onto. Um, something to be careful of for newer Berserker players is if the person you're trying to clip with that dodge attack has an all guard that all guard can still catch that attack and you can still be punished by it which again could set you up to take the 60 to 70 damage well something that berserk has the other characters don't always is he has no. a target advanced lights so if you want to barrett you can do a um target swaps attack yeah on Look, wall, wall, full block full block full block wall of yeah. full block and try yeah. and this yeah it should go right through okay so so this is also a strategy in 2v2 like uh not necessarily in TP2 in team fights. If you know someone is gonna external block you and he's low, or doesn't matter if he's low, you can always just trade with him because even if he I do this, he can hit me, but I have the option to chain. So I can trade with him. And if I position correctly, which I'm not sure if I will, but I will try, I can maybe even hit him oh, before he hits me. That's very nice. Okay. Works on pretty much every char except BP if he flips you. Yeah. Got yeah. You. Okay. Uh, it's kind yeah, of hard to do. It's a heavy whiff, but I think it'd be better if I was on your opposite side here. And actually yeah. full blocked it. Mm. Interesting. Try one more time. Do it. You can always target swap to the... To the, um, to the nah, I cannot. Can I not? My die. Oh, there I got it. Go. I got uh, it yeah. before. Very nice. As a demonstration of how much damage you can take from one light parry, I will dodge attack blitz and then... Um, yeah, you, you do. Oh, no, you're, you're yeah, you're gonna do it. You have more damage. Ah, I fucked it. <laughs> That's yeah, it, Morla. It's fine. Um, Come here, let's. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm worried. Okay. And that's that's three oh. heavies and an unblockable. That if he has the passive tier two, it's thirty nine damage. That's all. And I also had the potential to get another 11 damage light as well there. So that would have been like, what, fucking, like, or over 80 damage? Like, that, that's so much damage for one light parry. One simple mistake you can make. So really be careful, don't get light parried. Also, don't throw... Okay, this is a bit of a no-brainer, it's not Berserker specific. But don't throw neutral lights neither, because they're not enhanced, and if you if they block it, they can get a free GB. And if they parry it, you're fucked. Yeah, so... Uh, alright. Oh, yeah. Next thing I want to talk about, for Berserker in Antigang specifically, is Hyper Armor trades in Antigang. They're very attractive to newer players, and even, even players that have uh, a lot of playtime, but you have to take into consideration that you are in an Antigang, and your health does uh, value more than enemy health. Uh, you, you need to have, like, a mentality for this. You have to, in an anti gank, you have to think like, I want to stall it. I, I want to survive as long as possible. If I kill them, that's a bonus. But what I need to do is stall so my team can win more and maybe my team can come help me and make a better situation. But I don't want to commit to things. I don't want to take a risk. I just want to play time. Because the longer I stay on the point, the longer I benefit and they lose. Especially if it's their point. <coughs> So, in terms of the num amount of total health amount in an anti in an anti gank situation, you've got you've got one health bar. They've got two health bars. If you're trading a heavy for a heavy, you're trading, let's say, um, you know, uh, five twenty percent of your health bar for ten percent of their total health. So you need to get you know, a trader. Your your best trades are going to be things like a light for a heavy. Otherwise, you're losing out on damage overall. I'm gonna light. For a heavy, it might be dangerous in certain situations. Yeah. yeah well, I mean, any, any. I mean, the point is, like, you don't want to be going for tr trades where, even where, like, an even trade against one player is actually a losing trade overall in the total amount of health. Can't and in general, Berserker really shines in revenge. Like, you don't want to really go in trades until revenge. With, but in revenge, you cannot really go in trades. Um, so, in general, you want to preserve your HP so you can get revenge. And with revenge, maybe get it again. But trades, unless they're like super beneficial, 
Don't trade. And be careful trading with unblockable, like top unblockable, because if you let it go, then you know, one with you, you are put in recovery that you cannot get out of. So that's very bad. Um, all right, next topic in 1v2, this is very, very important, so please pay attention, is using tags to your advantage. So as you know, most people, when a 2v1 you, uh, their job is to kill you before you get revenge. So a lot of the times, once you have a high revenge bar, they're just not going to give you revenge anymore. So one thing to to adapt to this situation is to just attack the person that attacked you. Because if one player has attacked you and you have revenge, and the other, and you know the other doesn't want to give you revenge, you just fight the person that gives you revenge, that attacked you already. Because this way, you're already in a 1v1, that he forces you to be anyway, because the other is not gonna attack you. And if the other wants to interrupt this 1v1 with, let's say, you're winning because you're Berserker and you have amazing 1v1, uh, he can only do it at the price of giving you revenge. So, let me give you an example. Kill free, attack me. Both, go, both attack me and give me like 90 revenge. Okay, now, if I am to fight Spanner because he attacked me, if Warlord attacks me and I block him and I survive it, I'm gonna get revenge. So he's okay. That's a reflex card for you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, so if my reflex card didn't have dropped there and I would have blocked the attack or parried it, I would have have gotten revenge. So during that time, I'm basically forcing. I mean, not forcing. I'm basically. Uh, forcing the fact that he cannot attack me and if he can attack me he's gonna give me revenge which is happy for me if he's not gonna attack me I'm gonna have a 1v1 with his teammate which is happy for me that, that is one of the big reasons Berserker is very good and and you have to be careful to only do this while you have the tag on because let's say I, I, I go nuts I, I know that I have to fight Spanner now but his tag runs out and the world can just hit me and and now he can kill me without giving me revenge, or attack me without giving me revenge. So once you, your the enemy tag has run out and you have absolutely zero attacks, wait for the next tag, and the next person to attack tag you is gonna be your next uh, one v one opponent. So right now it's Warlord. For five seconds I can fight Warlord, assuming I have a lot of revenge. Now Spanner can totally attack me and not care about revenge. Fucking reflex guard. Uh, so. <laughs> okay. um, so, yeah, it's very important you take advantage of this. It's ta tags might seem very bad, but you can definitely play around them and uh, force opponents in bad situations. Yeah, and you you have to keep in mind your tags yourself because you can't see your own tags. Uh, that you can't see yeah. your own generation of the tags. The opponents can see when they will. Uh, they can they have the time of themselves they can see your revenge bar flashing but you can't so you have to be careful especially when you're being aggressive in a 1v1 type type situation in the middle of a two in the two fight you you can be like getting your momentum and then because your opponent's not counter-attacking because you're attacking them so much their tag's going to run out and um and you know your their ally can you know, hit you for a heavy and then you don't give revenge at that point so you have to be you do have to be careful and think about your own tags yourself i mean there's it's unfortunate they can't change how with with how revenge works they can't let there's no way of displaying to the user when you have tags because it depends on the opponent that makes sense that make, if that makes any sense um like i i can't know if i'm gonna gain revenge unless i unless i know who hits me because the tags are based on they're like relative to the opponent mm. So, you know, in, in case you thought that was me just complaining about how tags, I mean, tagsism I don't like very much, but, but yeah, it's not just, it's not just a complaint. Tags are hard to see. It's literally impossible to, to demonstrate, to show it in a way that's clear, I guess, unless you make your opponent's revenge bars flash as well or something. All right. When you get attacked, you have a five second timer in your head. Uh, you need to keep it in mind. If you don't, you can get hit by surprise and ask where is my revenge when obviously your tag ran out and that's why you didn't get revenge. <laughs> right? 
yeah. next thing I'm going to talk about is the one v the person attack. This is a bit more dual tip, but I will try to explain how to use your offense to your full advantage. So the the high, the one common question in, in for honor is like how to get better at reading. Like for example, how to get better at like throwing the lights. How to get better at guessing what the opponent is gonna do. So the answer is, or at least the way I see it, is like learning and knowing how to adapt to your opponents. We have to actively think and try to understand your enemy. And this comes with experience, leave, experience, but the best way to improve is to actively think about what you're doing. Like, uh, for example, in, I'm noticing this guy likes to start parrying after I hit him once or twice. I have to adapt to that. I Instead of ignoring it, like, I, I cannot let things that I see be ignored. I always have to think what he's going to do based on previous experiences. I cannot go blind, like, for example, go into a chain and just attack Uga Bunga without thinking it. I mean, you can do that, but if you... <clears throat> if you get parried, you need to start adapting. You need to start thinking more about what you're doing and how to do it better. And obviously, this changes to person to person. There's not, like, one way to do it for everyone, but the best way I do it is, like, to categorize people and try to, like, for example... The way I categorize someone who parries a lot is like, I categorize someone that parries a lot. And against that guy, I will just try to bait him out more on it. Or someone who parries little, but uh, he parries in like critical situations. Well, I have to remember that. If I don't remember that, I might get surprised. So just take all the facts that you know about your opponent and try to make uh, educated guess for the future. Yeah. I mean, it's a hard thing to do, and it's especially difficult when you are focusing on what you're doing yourself. So you have, this is what partly why it comes with experience, because you have to be, you have to know what you're going to be, you have to know your character well enough that what you're doing is instinctual, so you don't have to be expending conscious thought on thinking, okay, I'm going to faint my next light into a, my next heavy into a light on the top guard, for example, or like, what am I doing after this? guard break if you're focusing on your you need to focus more on your opponent than than yourself if that makes any sense um and you know player like barak is, is well past that because he's got he's played the character such a long time but it's difficult to you have it does take like a lot of practice to get to the level where you can focus more on read it on like understanding your opponent than understanding your own moveset if that makes any sense no Obviously, as I said, this is a bit more advanced tutorial, so I, you should already kind of know your moveset and what to do in and out. Yeah. Since... Oops, sorry. All right. So, yeah, that was it for the anti-gang section. Next, we're going to talk about his fits. So, first, the, the optimal fit. Uh, fit, uh, you know, setup in my opinion, is the Bounty Hunter for Tier 1, Bear Trap for Tier 2, uh, Fury 100%, one Tier 3, and now for Tier 4 you have Flask or Fury itself. Flask is probably better if uh, you can just run it, like for example in matchmaking you can just run whatever, but in competitive there's a rule called, uh, it, it, there's a rule that doesn't allow one team to have two duplicate Tier 4s. So, for example, in my situation, in my team, I have we have a Berserker and a Janjong, and we both have Flask. But since we cannot both run it, I have to go for the alternative. I can go to... I can pick Fear itself and allow him to pick Flask. And since Fury and Fear itself are very good fits, both of them, and very similar level, I can, I can let's say, sacrifice a bit for my uh, teammate to win a lot. Because he went from Phalanx, which is... A, Good defensive feat. It's not that bad, but it's not as good as Flask. Flask, in general, offensive feats are better than defensive feats. The reason for it is because uh, if you do get an offensive feat early on, it allows you to keep uh, keep the momentum going, keep uh, stopping opponents. While if you get Phalanx early on, I mean, sure, you're going to survive an extra 10 seconds. 
I mean, or survive against an enemy flask, but you already have tier 4 and nobody else has tier 4, so what are you gonna do with phalanx? The flask, you know, you get it, you get it early, you can use it early. Yeah, so if, as an example of the combination of a uh, fury, fear, it's, uh, fear itself, and um, I actually probably have to wait for my ally to get his flask back, just to show the maximum damage potential. Oh, sorry. For fear itself and flask? Yeah, fear itself and fury and flask. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna talk about it. I'm like, oh, there's more. Sorry, I wanna say. My bad. Right. So first of all, fear itself. Why fear is so good? First of all, fear is a a, a feat that very well synergizes with almost every feat in the game, because unlike most feats that buff you or deal damage to opponent, this feat debuffs everyone. It debuffs the people in the area. So this buff, this fit, doesn't make opponents, doesn't make you do more damage to your opponents, uh, doesn't make you do more damage to your opponents, makes your whole team do it. Which is, for example, let's say, if Berserker was as good as Fear itself, significantly worse because with Fear itself, you allow everyone to do damage. While with Berserker, assuming that it does give you, you it had like pre-buff uh, stats, uh, it does only better damage for you. Are we gonna do fear flask? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's run out already. Oh, well. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die anyways. Doesn't matter though. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter. It one shots. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah. Fear also stacks with every offensive fit in the game. Like just as you saw, fear and flask is one, one uh regular combo that we can do. But be careful. It's a very expensive combo. Like. You don't have to necessarily do it. Flask all, all already does a lot of damage on itself. Like even Fury Flask sometimes it's a bit overused. Flask on itself Your is good enough. Fear itself and then oh. like shoot with a bow, for example. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, that's a really good example. Fear and bow, amazing. Go on, go on, show it off. All right. Uh, of course. So his bow normally does 30 damage. 50 damage. Look at, 50 damage, look how much it did now. 75. 75. So yeah, it's a big, big increase. The stack with right. too. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it does. But uh... but you got it on. Them, so yeah, if you if you had his tier two, then it it would be, and it stacks multiplicatively as well. So you could probably get ninety damage on it. I think probably. Even, I don't know if even, even more maybe. Um, if if Blitz did a uh, his champions what's the winner's advantage, fear and um. And longbow would be ridiculous amount of damage. What it because you have to actually hit somebody for winners advantage to activate, right? Yeah, but it yeah. lasts for it. So if you if you you'd have to hit somebody. Oh, and so if I just if I just light and faint and then pop longbow. Yeah, yeah, no, it should last long enough. Oh, the old bow is quite slow. Um, sorry for interrupting again. All right, moving on. So we talked about fear. Now we're talking about the really game changer fit, Marvin, which is. Fury. So basically, once you have Fury, you level up. Now you have the chance to push back up and have a significantly better survivability and damage and just overall chance of winning or even or, or stalling very, very long time. So one strategy that I'd like to use with Fury is like when I get it, I just try to save it until I find a very, opportunity, a very good opportunity to push with it. And this way, I just force opponents. I just force opponents to stall and resist me while I'm having 35 damage buff and defense. Am I correct? 35 both defense and damage. Yeah, yeah, which is amazing, and it lasts for 20 seconds. I think it's even longer than that. And obviously, I'm not sure if I mentioned, but I'll mention it now. Fury and Fury itself they stack together. So one heavy does. 59 damage. One unblockable heavy does 63 damage. Yeah, it health Which is there. insane, ladies and gentlemen. It is, you become a whirling dervish of death. Uh, uh, yeah. so, so, a quick question if I could ask. Um, what would be the the uh, perfect opportunity or an opportunity where you would use uh, Fury? Fury? Yeah, because mm. you were saying um, that uh, you were you would save it until the opportunity comes. 
What would that opportunity oh. look like? I understand. Uh, the opportunity I was thinking about is, for example, I uh, the, the opportunity I was thinking about is I fight in mid, we get advantage. Now we either all go heal or we either one one thing pushes. With Fury, I have the uh, the possibility to push alone and be very very threatening. So the best opportunity I was talking about is to take advantage of people having to rotate to heal, use uh, playing the chaser playstyle and preserving your HP, and then go in with Fury against low players and forcing them to all come on you and deal with you, which is very hard because you're Berserker, you can anti gank well, and now on top of that you have 35 more damage and 35 more HP. 35 more, H H uh, 35 more HP is very, very, very good. Yeah, and it also does. It affects your ability to get revenge because they hit you whilst you. They you still yeah. the same amount of revenge as it would on a base attack. So they can't kill you, but they can give you revenge. So, if with the, with that amount of damage, what I'm trying to say. So, yeah, you. It's a damn good combo. And we we did do a dojo a couple of weeks ago, or with Clutch actually, who talked about. Um, like good opportunities to push when you want to push your your opponent and um, opponent's home point, and this this is very relevant to Berserker as well because he's he will often go and push on his own in one of these situations. Like if if you've won a team fight in mid and two people are are low and they are going back to heal, that's an opportunity the Berserker wants to go and take advantage of because he's quite good at two v ones and with especially with fury like two people trying to gank a berserker when they have like two bars of health each that is a very favorable situation for berserker if you've got enough health to deal with it um so oh, thank you thank you for the um explanation no worries yeah um there'll be there's a check out our youtube channel because we've got the old um dojos all uploaded there so you'll have to see that um, yeah all right Moving on, the next three that I want to talk about is tier itself and how risky it is. Uh, as I mentioned before, Berserker is one of the easier heroes to get blown up, and if he really kind of you know helps you with that, you know you have more HP, and you have more HP, and you also get the same amount of revenge. Uh, but tier itself doesn't provide any defensive boost. So you have to be careful to not die with fear itself because fear itself, first of all, is a very good team fight fit. Don't really use it selfishly. It's way more. It's way more beneficial to use it in a big team fight. Um, but since he's one of the heroes that get blown up, you have to think yourself as more of a supportive hero. You want to, you want to survive. You don't want to die. Since if you die, the uh, the buff just goes away and your teammates lose minus 50% extra damage. So just try to survive, try to pop fear itself when you know you're gonna leave and not die in the next 20 so seconds. A demonstration, I can pop it and you can hit me in the startup and... Yeah. Oh, actually, well, there we go. Yeah, my bad. It, it, has, a, it has like one second startup. You can definitely hit people out of it. So yeah, just... Uh, be careful with it. Don't die and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Is there anything else you want to talk about, Banner? Mm. Uh, well, that's it for fits. I don't really have anything else to mention. I mean, I have bear trap. Okay, bear trap. So you have to learn where to place the bear trap. And some uh, some ideas I can provide is very good, and very often I I do it in minions, and I especially stay around it so if I'm fighting someone and I know it's gonna get a bear trap I'll try to take advantage of it and as you can see you get a lot a lot of time to do your damage like I had time to dodge forward and then do neutral heavy it gives you 22 seconds so what usually happens is like as I said I have uh, teammates nearby and we all do like our most damaging attacks so we can almost one shot him so that is a very good bear trap placement you just have to just have to catch your opponent in it. Another good bird trap placement that I like to use 
are so here's an example uh there, there are two that i wanted to say there's like ones at the entrance of the spawn or see them in the spawn uh in the in the point like for example you used to put it into items but you can add anymore but what you can do uh is put it between random objects so what i meant first is that you used to put it into items like for example in this staircase if i placed a bear trap it would be hidden but now it isn't now you can see it uh spaniard come here and place a bear trap oh, yeah. look, looking towards looking towards uh looking towards the stairs obviously yeah, he doesn't have it sorry or doesn't have it in general okay well i'm i'll put it yeah. so now this this is visible it used to be hidden but uh since i placed it here i would like to also mention it uh this kind of spots are very good to place bear traps especially once you are fleeing the fight because a lot of people a lot of times you will be chased so putting like let's say the specific spot you left a because you're low and put a bear trap here if someone chases you you have the upper hand on it and it's very unlikely they're gonna see this bear trap as well yeah. other spots i would like to recommend are again into debris or into random objects in the point like here if i put it which i don't have it yet it will be a bit less hidden and it's also at close to the entrance of this point uh but you can put them inside uh, the walls as well still so yeah. if i'm standing here i could put it well, i'll do with a doom see if i can try it with a doom uh -huh. banner but um it will go no oh, the wrong hand but you can you can put it like inside the wall yeah yeah that's true but the, the best thing is to like put it inside the wall and inside some objects as well like for example this would be the perfect spot right here into this wall but since it is into the wall the area that it can hit people in is lower because some of it goes into the wall almost like half of it so keep that in mind as well yeah so basically entrance of the points around the corners are very good or even on the point like random bear traps here or in the corners are always good and try to try to force your opponent to go there like here, here's a good example i put this perch up which it's not the most obvious one like yes you can see it but look look at it it's a bit a bit disguised in that debris especially yeah. if you come here so spanner don't run into it come come outside please so now that spanner go here mm -hmm. Spaniard is my enemy. He wants to come onto this point, but I want to defend it. So, but I have this bird trap, and I want him to get into it. So one way I could uh, force him to get into it is I, I stand on the other side. So if he wants to enter the point, he'll have to either go for me, which is hard, or go into the bird trap, which is what I want. Yeah. All right. That, that is it that, uh, for what I have to say for Fitz. Moving on, the next thing I want to talk about is his gank uh he has a makeshift gank as i mentioned but it is very good to know that uh it can have a very good performance in team fights like this gank is not necessarily one to like send you know like a full hp backupper to deal with but something to do something to like finish off someone in a 2v2 that is already low this gank works perfectly perfectly or let's say warlord went out of stamina or is far away me and Blitz can totally sneak up on Spanner and kill him right now. And and he, that heavy wasn't confirmed, but yeah. I have another thing to do. If he doesn't heavy in time, I can also do this 400 ms slide to confirm the heavy. So, for example, delay your heavy. Ah, it didn't work this time. I, but, yeah. I thought it counted guard break. Yeah. yeah. If you don't if you don't count a guard break, that's actually one of the um. I just messed up that, that parry up, but yeah. Um, also, I would like to mention, uh, let's kill him. There's also a way to get a follow-up light to be the full nine damage. I'm not sure how it works, but sometimes it just is. So yeah, yeah. first of all, just, just so it's clear for everyone, the setup is the following. Teammate, which is in this situation Blitz, guard breaks an opponent. And the Berserker gets a free zone attack, which I remind you is uh, full damage. It doesn't get any damage reduction. The first hit. The... No, no, not, not even the first hit. Really? Go on, then go Please. Please. Four damage. Yeah, you're right. All of them. 
Um, so the zone attack is guaranteed on the damage on the GB with no damage reduction, and its hit stun gives enough time for your teammate to get a free heavy or a free most damaging attack. Like for example, you could do other setups. It doesn't have to be a heavy. A good example could be Berserker Shogun Kikak. One GB into zone. And instead of him having, he's gonna hug, so he can start his own gank. So this way we uh, combo two ganks with each other. We mix them, we use both Shugoki and Berserker's gank. I mean, but we're... Or another example would be like Lobbringer's long arm, if it was as it used to be in the past. Or Highlander's, uh, let's say, grab, to grab him on the ground, so we can both heavy afterwards. Uh, obviously, not all of them are as good as Shugokis, but uh, some of them have the potential to uh, confirm way more damage. Like, for example, there used to be this one shot with Lobringer and Berserker, where Berserker GB'd for his zone and Lobringer long armed. And if you hit people in while they were long armed, you would interrupt them. So you just, while they were getting long armed, you would just time attacks and you would both one shot together. Yeah, so if, um, like, it doesn't, you also don't always have to confirm the zone. So if Blitz, if you come and stand out here, mm -hmm. and then Warlord, you go over in the corner. Um, it ha uh, yeah. So basically, be pre prepared to charge him. Uh, you know, it has extremely long block stun. Even if Blitz blocks it, it's gonna block stun for yeah. a long time, which can <clears throat> confirm. So you don't need to yeah. guard break for the zone in order to confirm a hug. You can just yeah. throw the zone, and it will. Yeah. yeah. If they parry it, it confirms the. If it confirms the hug, and if they don't, it confirms the hug. So, so he, he, here, here's what, what a spanner is saying, so we, we can say it as well. Come here, uh, no, bits, mm -hmm. bash, of, bash of this uh, zone. Filthy, sp uh, block it. How oh, did you want me to so, open it? No, just bash it. Oh my god, I'm terrible today. No worries. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, please block it. All right. So assuming that Zanhu's bash was the hug of my blocked son, he was able to get into get a free hug, which leads into Shugunki's gang infinite. Yeah, you gotta be All careful right. zone that you use it in a position that you that you don't space in position that's uh, you know gonna hit your ally. So if a uh, blitz, um, if my wall comes in a blitz and guard breaks for me, um, Hershey, if you can guard break blitz for me. Oh, well, actually, that, that actually that was fine. But sometimes I can hit my warlord with it, and then that will prevent. It's usually, when I don't counter guard break. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And if you don't counter guard break, it just yeah, you guaranteed to hit both of them. So. Um. Oh, I guess there's one other tip. I think we we talked a bit about chase. I don't think we mentioned how you can. I mean, it's in this move set, but the four dodge heavy goes a very long way, and you can and you can cancel the whisk recovery into an another dodge and just carry on going. Yeah, sometimes yeah. it hits, sometimes it doesn't. But usually this one, you like, you have to have eyes. As I said, you're the chaser, so you have to eyes have eyes on the low HP person. And once he tries to run away, that was your cue to run away. Oh, sorry. You can do it, and a lot of times it will track. <laughs> But if he if he's already running away from you, sometimes it might just hit. But sometimes it might just hit. So you can know it's a bit it, it also you can't faint it normally, but if you're in the running like the running animation yeah. of it, you can faint it. I can so, I can show it as well. Yeah. So right now I am wait. I have to basically have to be I, like, I just did it. So right now I'm running with my Axe is crossed, but then I can sell it. I'm trying to demonstrate it on my end. Um... Lock on Blitz. He's far away. Yeah. Or lock on me. Where have you gone back? Oh wow, okay, it just, it just went. Oh my god, I am terrible today. There we go. Wait for more distance. There we go. That's me facing it. 
But yeah, it would be oh. nice if uh, it actually went, if you could faint it properly, but you can faint it during the run. So. Obviously, uh, oh, very important to mention, you said about Chase. One thing that is very good to know is that you cannot really roll from Berserker, because even even if you roll for me, like, let me give you an example, I can I can, I can can still catch. So for example, I will do a light into unblockable, and you're going to try to roll unblockable because you're 1 HP and you're very, very afraid. But even if I let it go, I can still catch you. Because on whiffed, I can cancel recoveries. Or even, let's say, if you roll it and I faint into light, I can still catch you. Like, I, I can almost always catch you. Like, no matter what, I'm gonna catch you. Even, even if you roll this heavy, <laughs> even if you roll this heavy, I can catch you. Like, no matter what. So, Berserker Light has very, very good range. If you want even more range on it, delay it a bit. So, instead of buffering like this and giving you the most range, delay it a bit more so you use the distance that the dodge gives you for the extra time uh, you are in it to have more range, like this. Like, let me show you buffered versus range. This is buffered. And this is delayed. Was it went a bit further. Yep. Um, what else is there to mention? So, so basically, because he has this sword attack, if you're trying to flee away from Berserker, you literally cannot because you're always at risk of just getting dodge attack. So you have to keep unlocking and locking back on to uh, make sure you don't get dodge attack, which means they cannot run. You did your job, you are not allowing them to flee. If uh, if they flee and they don't lock on back, you can dodge attack for free. But usually a lot of times people will just do this. Just wait for the dodge attack. So you have to make a read on it. And one thing that you can do against it is like, if you do make a good read on it, I'm gonna run, punish me. Not with that. With the that one. I, if I parry it, I can run. But then again, you can do dodge heavy on me. But I can also play that and run again. But still, it's very, I'm making it... Berserker is making it very hard on me to allow me to run. And here, th this is a perfect example. Uh, try to roll my dodge heavy. Oh, sorry. Uh, Manner. Yep. I, I get a free dodge light if you roll my dodge heavy while I'm chasing. So unlock and run away. That's a free light. I mean, there it wasn't because he dodged early. Here he dodged too early that I caught him. But I know you can dodge not too early. Yeah. And I get yeah, a lot. There are often people... A lot of players better than me, so... As you can see, I, I managed to fail a lot of demonstration stuff as well as... Even when I'm told exactly what I need to do. Uh, <laughs> uh, is there anything else? Or have we... Can I get over <laughs> Stuff. That, that is it for all I prepared. Now we can go to the question section. If you have anything you want to ask me, now is the time. Now is the time. Uh, I'll only check the chats to see if there's anything that's been written down. Um, does the heavy after zone feed any revenge? If it's your opponent's heavy that's landed... Uh, if it's your ally's heavy that's landed on your zone, then yes, it will feed revenge because your zone will tag them. Um, uh, that's the only question I've got so far. Any old... Options from recovery council. Okay, so after you throw a heavy, as long as it whiffs, or yeah, you can hit an external opponent, um, actually any attack, you can cancel into a dodge attack, into a dodge, or you can cancel into a zone. Um, and you can so one thing I mentioned, and I can explain it a bit more now, come here, Spanner. I said if you want to trade in team fights. Always do it unlocked because even if the heavy lands, I can, I can uh, dodge out of it. So I always want to be unlocked when I trade. Also, another good tip I can mention that just came to my head because I did it is uh, you have a good delay window on your dodge attack. You can delay it. So this is the buffered, and this is the delayed. There's so much delay on it. So basically, what this means is like. Just like that, when I dodged, but I dodged a bit too early, I delayed my dodge attack to the maximum to get extra eye fans. So it's very important to know how to do this. 
All right. Uh, when do you use which, which recovery cancel? Well, obviously, dodge is great for avoiding things. And the zone is good for if some, if somebody tries to punish your whiffed, if you whiff a finisher and they they try and punish it with the guard break, you can zone off and zone attack, them yeah. and that will hit them out of there. Um, I think it's quite dangerous to use the zone cancel in in gank situations if you're being ganked because it puts you in quite a long animation that your opponents can just hit you with a heavy right. Yeah. Um, if I if I like you know. Whiff an attack and then zone. I'm stuck doing that for a second and a half, so that's a an opportunity to land a big heavy on me. Um, and I don't think you can. You cancel after a zone if you like a whiff a zone. Can you? No. Um, okay. So you can only cancel your normal attacks. You cannot cancel after zone or after uh, dodge attack, which I hope oh, uh, gets changed. Yeah. It'd be very nice if we can dodge after everything, just like uh, every other character with dodge cancels. All right. Any other questions? Um, uh, after the CC nerf, who are you going to use for comp? Uh, I'm. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I can, I can, I cannot, I cannot say right now. Maybe Vader, maybe Berserker, maybe Orochi, depending on what's good. Yeah, it's too early to say, really. Um, yeah. This is going to change a lot. It's going to be a lot. Of I want to play Berserker, but if I cannot, I will not play him. Uh, yeah. I guess that is probably all that. What we could do. Uh, oh, the back zone. Just don't. Just don't use the back zone. It's just. It's yeah. Just... I mean, yeah. Sometimes you can use it as an option, so like if you don't want to just get blocked and parried. Yeah, but then even, like, even then you don't get the punish if you parry, so it's still bad. Yeah, but they can then just like maybe you depending on character. And do so much things. Like for example, Bolo can delay bash and I cannot do anything about it. Yeah. Oh. No. What do you do then? I tried to bash. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Um, um what else? Uh, just people talking about option select stuff. It's been trying anti gank without option select. Well, I mean, at least with Berserker, you don't really want to be used. Berserker will have a couple of extra option selects that yeah. aren't not gone. So, I mean, that we refer to as option selects, but aren't in the same way. So you can parry on light. Berserker can dodge cancel his heavies. So you yeah. can parry on light timing and also deflect to heavy. So I might okay, do that as well. The, 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 okay. So. Warlord, give me, listen to me, give, give me side light uh, or side heavy. You have to mix me up. Okay. A bit bad at it, but basically what you have to do is input the parry in the first 100 ms, and then you can option select both light and heavy, and it all only works if there is a 400 ms window between the light and the heavy. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Let, me, let me try to do it again. I'll, I'll do it more consistently. Well, well, yeah, I've got to think my heavy is a bit better in the window. Uh, also, I cannot do it on you. I cannot do it on you. You can't. It doesn't no. have no. I'm gonna do it on one. Yeah. So I'm I'm curious about the warlord heavy timing now uh, with it being side and you saying that there had to be that 100 ms there because his lights are the 500 yeah. heavy is 900 there has to be a 400 ms delay between it but Zerker's gotcha. uh, lights are 500 his heavy is 800 there's a 300 ms delay between my top gotcha. lights Maybe. Man, I, I'm feeling it too hard. Let me, let me do it one more time. Okay. okay. Nice. 
That has got to be by far one of the most stylish reads. Seriously. Yeah, it's, it's a, an it, option for both. Yeah, a, exactly. That's. And you do you put input all the same, like the heavy into dodge. Like no. that's the, the input you want to put in both of them at the same time. Uh, also, pro tip: when when you faint with dodge, uh, you don't lose stamina. So you can do that to save yourself stamina. Oh, if you uh... nice. Yeah, fine. Right, also, another good tip is to do this. So on GB, you cannot really do things, like for example, uh, to avoid getting punished. What you can do are two things. So try to punish me on GB, Warlord. Oh, sorry. I can either light and hope I have enough time to get into Iron Armor, which I most of the times don't, but I had this time. Or you can do this, and this is might be a bit better. You can heavy into dodge. So, for example, in this specific scenario where I saw he would, uh, he would heavy me, what I would do, I get a GB. Here he came in. I would dodge. Right. You me with. I can even dodge into deflect. That's the But, you, but you have to be really careful and good at it. Because I have to do it on reaction to him attacking me. Yeah. Mm, I didn't have enough time. So in that scenario, I was, I buffered it. He attacked early, so I couldn't do anything about it. The light wouldn't have hit anyway, so there was basically nothing to do. Don't get GBs in teamfights. It doesn't, it's not worth it. You will get hit out of it. Yeah. Um... But in case you do, this is a thing to do about it. Um, yeah, I think I think that's quite well. We've gone quite a lot, gone quite a long time. Probably longer than I thought we we would actually talking about just talking. Um, if we want, we could set up a fours, um, a four scrim. We have some people playing berserker, and then you can we can spectate them, and you can critique afterwards like that. Oh, we'd like that. Uh, what, I, I don't know about that. No worries. I have to go as well. I have to do other things too. No, but uh, I was happy. I was. It was. I was happy to be here. Enjoyed oh, thank the... you very much for coming. Barak. Yeah, it's okay. good. Well, in that case, what we can do, um, we can still do that, and Barrack could just head off, um, because he's yeah. a busy man. Um, if you have any any interesting clips, in my opinion, on I can obviously help, but I, I don't have the time to watch like quite some hours of conversations. Zerk, if anybody's down for some twosies, some Zerk. Was that blitz? Uh, I'll play some twosies with Zerk if anybody's down for the twosies. Yeah, that's. I think that'd be a good idea rather than rather than four scrims and even twos because we can talk about yeah. more. Yeah, we could. I'm down if that's an option. Sounds good. Okay. Um. Right. Yeah, that's it for me though. So it was very nice to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you. Good, good luck. Good luck in this game as well. See you, Zerk. Right. Bye, bye, everyone. Thank, thank you. Bye. Bye, boys. All right, so what we'll do is, um, Blitz, you can set up a lobby and I'll spectate. And then, uh, does that, that sound good? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I guess I'll leave the group. Um, uh, by the way, is my is my audio is my audio still kind of interfering with everyone else's? Fine, I've not heard anything from that yet. Oh. So. All right, all right. So... All right. Oh, Blitz invited me. Okay. Um, well, if I was going to spectate, then I don't need to be invited. Oh, okay. So, wait, who's playing? Yeah, so who, should we get some sure, three volunteers I'll to play? play. I'll be able to play. And Neem said he would? Yep. And who else? Uh, me, MK Ultra. Uh, how do you... I can play a shiny runner. Can you tell me how to spell that? MK, uh, U, L... Shit, I don't know how to spell my own. U L T R A. Is there any numbers or anything? Yes, nine nine seven six at the end. You think we can? Oh, it's the same as your username, basically. There yeah. we go. All right. So we can get. Um, is egg still around? Blitz, you know. Oh, we check. Because I think we need some. We'd have a, another experienced player on against running against you. Um,
Well, it might be a bit of balance if we have a blitz and three players who are not as experienced. Blitz just won a 2v2 tournament yesterday, so... Hey, congrats, man. Am yeah. I need... Sir, and we're doing some 2v2s with the Xerxy character. Or I'm playing Zerk, at least. I don't I don't know who you play. Where'd Barrett go? He uh, had to go. He had yeah, to go. He's, he's, he's alright. We've got a half an hour left on, of the of the dojo slot, so... so yeah, if, you an egg, go, if Egg joins with the lobby, then we can... Oh, you want to play 2Zs with Zerk? Yeah. Yeah, I'm playing Tuesdays with Zerk. I'm streaming him as well. So. You are. Uh, you're on the other boot team. Up. Assuming. Let me boot up. Uh, I invited you, memes. Oh yeah, and my game is just taking a bit to load. All right, I also invited a uh, Ultra. There he is. Okay. So yeah, the Ultra memes, uh, Blitz and Egg, and hopefully two of you guys can go Berserker and I'll spectate, and we can talk a little about about what's what's going on. Do you want on. me and Egg in opposite teams? Oh, uh, yes, please, yeah. Or Egg and I, he always corrects me on that. <laughs> Fizz. Jerk face, whole face, whole. Uh, when's the, when's the Tuesday starting, uh, tourney starting today for you? I don't know actually. Um, I'll double check oh, that. Did you ever figure out who those people were? The two EU gamers that signed up for the NA tournament, got on alts, and I'm assuming a VPN. There were two EU gamers that signed up for the tournament. Yeah, they beat Scorpion and Rival. Oh. Um, yeah, they they were on alts and they were like rep two, and they uh yeah they got on Scorpion and Rival. They asked, "Yo, are where are you guys? Are you guys EU?" They said they're NA East. Scorpion and Rival are in a NA East, and you know they were on like 60, 80 ping. So everybody assumed they're EU uh, game. Uh, yeah, and when somebody joined the lobby, they saw it was like a you know continent, different continent. So. Well, I don't know in that case. Uh... I, I didn't. I didn't know that was a. That was something that was that was that happened. A bit of a shame. Well, when was this tournament? This uh, two v two tournament? Uh, yesterday. Oh, yesterday. Oh, dang. I streamed oh, yeah. by streamed by Northern Rush. Wow, that must have been really uh, busy. I'm assuming you don't want me to play Shigoki because he's like a natural counter. You can play where you want. Um, oh, yeah. I do the counter sword. That's a good match. You can play JJ if that's who you want. And now I want to do Kensei. All right, you can play Shiga actually. You want to play Shiga? I do not want to play Shiga. Send me a letter. I sent you an. I sent you an invitational. Okay, so actually the EU tour is started half an hour ago. Oh, so it's starting right now. I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. So I guess we can. Well, I don't know if you guys, if you, well, you'll have to go and watch. I'll, we'll we'll throw um, Northern Rush a uh, what can I call it afterwards. So um, raid. We'll raid Northern Rush afterwards. Um, so we can see a couple of twos first. Right, now that we've set it up at least. I'm rooting for my boy Antonio. Antonio, if he's playing. We'll see if he's playing. Actually, I um, have you know, razors. Mm, I love razor. I'm digging the McDonald's JJ. <laughs> I like the Mickey D's JJ. I think oh, the best thing your, the best mic, support, your mic is actually going off again, Mike Vapor. Yeah. The best thing oh. you need is like a you know a McDonald's Chigo with you know American flag in the background or something. I have a McDonald's JJ. I mean Shugo, but I'll guess I'll that, work on that, American. That, that is like a statement on the U.S. man, Christ. You know, West Virginia has a two hundred, like a two hundred pound uh, average weight. It's crazy. No. Then again, I don't know a lot of things. It's kind of bonkers. It is kind of bonkers. There's one team in E1 which was also played in the NA1. They're literally the same players. Uh, 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 all right, got what eyes. About the... oh, there you go. Shit. I'm sure it might uh, not work. Hello. It feels a bit hurting, but we'll see. Hello. What the heck?
Give me. Hello. Yeah. Uh, no, I can't stag. What'd you say? Hello. 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 Oh, there we go. I don't know. My mic settings was uh, messed up somewhere. Okay. No worries. Yeah, I've got both the spectator and the and Blitz's screen on. So. Well, that would be in sync. Um, so I guess I'd just go with just the spectator view but when it loads up. Should be easy enough for me to test the right player. Ah, oh, perfect. More respect, Eddie. Look. You can see that the off-target dodge attacks he's already Ooh. using. Out of stem. Out of stem. Out of stem. Yep. Come on. Yep. Nice. Nice trade. Oh shit. Big heavy I didn't know he died. Egg? Well, that's the danger of reflex guard, of course. You can get hit by attacks when your guard goes down, which is what we saw. Really nice trade there. So that, that's an example of a good trade, which is one that, you know, that's... kills the opponent. And then we've got a nice classic gank. Light from blockable. That's perfect, pretty much. Yep. Perfectly done. If you make some bad trades, Zerk can get blown up pretty easily in two years. Yeah. But like, there's also if you play him right, he's almost untouchable. Yeah. So that was a we saw really that was a really nice example of the of the Zerk gank. Um. Well, well, well executed. I did not mean to press that. Well, did very well anyway. <laughs> um. Nice use of that forward dodge light. Uh, I mean, I quite like using that to whiff and then get into a chain. That was what. Let me say that was a trade there that was not necessarily a good trade because Blitz took a heavy and then another heavy. You've got to be careful We're trading with other characters that have got hyper armor because they can carry on going. Oh, I can't feel way too far. I was going to spectate the. Uh... Whoa! Oh my god. Could zone oh, the numbers are all fucked up. Didn't see that Meme's at gonna... all. Meme's gonna kill Egg or... Oh, he lets it go. And gets round two. Very nice. I have to say, your yellow face paint JJ is horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Really? You're, 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 you're uh, being uh, one of the three judges of uh, cosmetics now? Yep, always have been. Um, <laughs> oh, I so you got to, that's the danger of using these light attacks, is actually you can get parried and blown up. Mm. That was a big trade there, but again, we see not necessarily a good one because the overall amount of damage came out on Z actually at, not in favor of Zerk. Because his chain heavies are they're good, but they're not they're not super high damage. They're like twenty six damage for a chain heavy, which is lower than most chain heavies. Um, it's mean they're very fast. We see you can use your four dodge heavy as peel a lot a very long range peel. Um, so that's what Blitz did then. Can Get off of me. Reflex guard, and times, and very nice. <laughs> Harry then. Well. So yeah, reflex guard it can be obviously a big disadvantage in these kind of in, in a two scenario, just because or team fight scenario, just because you, your guard runs out and you end up eating light attack there, here and there, which add up. Um, he was trying to bait bait a trade and then went for. Oh, I was way too far. Oh, no, 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 no! The so, yeah, LK Ultra taking a very unfavorable trade there. If you try and trade with characters that have hyper armor themselves, well, then you're going to end up in a prolonged nice. throwing heavies at each other move again. Very well executed 
Zerk gank there. We saw guard break zone, ally heavy, and light attack to confirm the unblockable off. Very well done. Off-target dodge attacks, hitting MK Ultra, and obviously you can't parry them. You can still dodge them, even though they're undodgeable, um, because they're not locked onto you, which means you can... Mm. In that very like big damage trade zone, something you, something you can actually do against Berserker, especially if you can't... I mean, it's what? risky as hell, but you can run in, you can just carry on trading, and I have seen, you know, there's hilarious clips somebody of like two berserkers just throwing heavy after heavy at each other again light from blockable we'll probably see a we'll see if it will how egg will do this gank but that's the danger of messing it up because then you can parry on you can parry after a blocked zerk zone it's unsafe on block yeah it was a little far away so like the, the hits actually came yeah. out There we go. That's the danger of having throwing a light attack that gets blocked. Um, and you had to bear that in mind. Oh, for... I meant to forward on. <laughs> you had to bear that in mind for your for your faint lights as well when you're playing Berserker. You get them if you accidentally use them against somebody externally guarding you. You're very liable to get get guard broken just from walking. There we go. See another good example of external oh, guard attack. Nice peel from memes there, stopping the full punish coming out on Blitz. Oh no! That's another benefit of Berserker having his hyper armor in these kinds of situations. You can, it's hard to peel, it's hard to be peeled against if you, you know, throw a faint heavy. Your heavy is going to be undroppable, so. They can't peel against you with a light attack or a zone. Um, they can use bashes to interrupt you, but if you're in a, like this comp here doesn't have a fast bash, you're very you're very advantaged in terms of being able to pull off your trade. So, so so if you are trying to you know counter peel a berserker, sometimes it's better to not use. I need to throw that more. A um a light attack or anything like that. You want to go with something that can trade for big damage because you're going to be trading. So you might as well. Yeah, you know, try and get heavy. Huh? A dangerous situation here for the oh attacker team. Oh my god, I'm fucking brain dead. Are you sponsored by McDonald's memes? No. <laughs> I just I don't have know how a I'm lot of that. McDonald's fashion. Like, yeah, <laughs> he just can't let it go. <laughs> yeah, like Perry, man. <laughs> he can't let it go. <laughs> oh, yeah, I swear, I swear, I'm pressing the heavy. I just can't like it. I don't know why. Oh, we got the go for the what berserker 1v1. One light attack could kill. Oh, and attackers get their first round. Well, played. oh my Hit. god, hype as fuck. Shall I know we? Ultra's not making a lot of noise right now, but he's probably hype as hell. Yeah. <laughs> We'll go, should we go like first to yeah. 10 and then we can oh, end the stream man. and then uh, head over to Henry. see a big trade that like, again, we see the advantage of doing these hyper armor trades blitz managed to trade two heavies for eggs, heavy and light. So it was a very favorable trade for him in that situation. But, you know, it's not always He's possible trying. to do that. And in a 2v2 situation, this kind of trade is better than... It's something you don't want to do that that nearly as much in fours because in fours you have to maintain your health throughout the next you know next interaction. Oh, Whereas no, 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 in a in a, in two v two, as long as you win the round, then it's over. You know you can win the round with no health, with <laughs> one health remaining. That's enough. Blitz tried for the deflect and didn't manage. I'm it all. so bad at this game right now. Yeah. Thought that was thought it was all over. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. That's the whole point of making mistakes, bud.
Just, just throw in nature's wrath, I'll never expect it. <laughs> Oh, the only reason really nice. <laughs> see your that's the benefit of something you can do with your dodge cancels. Didn't manage to get a punish on it, but that's probably sensible in a uh one v one in a two v two situation. You know, you can see oh, no, you're gonna be a casting roll on reaction with a forward dodge light. Um Ooh, that's locked under me. Damn. Let's see. Egg is trying to bait out one of these forward dodge attacks from from Blitz, probably. <laughs> Pretty commendable of you guys so far to avoid using the uh, option selects right now, which is good, considering that they're the data number. I don't really well, yet. You want We don't tend to use them, Blitz and I. I'm not sure about memes and Ultra. Yeah, you want to, like now, we know they're going away, it's probably a good idea to train yourself to not use them anymore. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I I have been using some. The good I mean, thing I'm it's still a new player. Do. Slightly missed on Garbreak there, but means Egg still has health. He's really trying really hard to bait one of these dodge attacks. Oh. <coughs> oh, and okay. Well, unfortunately, Blitz now uh, Egg can't get revenge, so he has to beat Blitz with one attack. Bro, just nature's wrath. Yeah, the neutral nature's wrath is the thing. I'm never. Oh, oh. Nice. yeah. I mean, this is we see the Zerk has so much pressure on opponents who are low and forced to one v one him. It was almost more beneficial for Egg to keep. Let me try and keep um the JJ alive, just, just so he can have someone to get strongly oh. blocked against. We can see then a, a I can't exactly if he tries to deflect it or just dodge it, but the external off target dodge attacks hitting again. On these unfavorable trades, you, it, it, you've got to be very careful not to go into these kind of trades if you can avoid it. Oh, um, that's locked under me, wasn't it? Well, but that, that one there was quite a good one, about, about equal damage. You could be much more oh, aggressive okay. with Berserker in a, in a 2v2 type situation, like your know, brawls, than you would necessarily want to be in... Uh, in... Uh, uh, you don't want to be attacked because because here, you, you want me to GB for Berserker. As we said, your health pool after you is a good example of how freaking zerk can get blown up yeah bad hyper armor trades and done but we're in in a matchmaking sorry matchmaking in 4v4 type scenario you have to uh. he's shooting for a zone yeah in a, in a 4v4 scenario you have to consider your health after the interaction as well so you know going for the revive pressuring Oh, the faint of light oh, wasn't quite enough. Oh. <laughs> oh, just not enough health to to, to kill oh, him before that light came through. I saw great. you weren't dodging it like ever. Had to make you dodge it at least one time. <sighs> now, if only they gave Kensei a good opener. Grandpa's opener. See, that's the danger of using the zone in a team fight. Uh, if you don't have it, if you're not in a gank situation, it puts you in an animation for a long time, and you're going to eat those damage. Blitz getting absolutely blown up there with those hyper armor trades. Um, I mean, it just happens. And then dodge uh, attack into. Uh, Ooh, bad trades. Into target swaps. A dangled light means you're going to take damage as well. I'm not, I don't know why you keep painting. Now, like, yeah, that, 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 that what happened there was actually pretty good, but I'll definitely I'm literally so fucking bad. I, I'll definitely say maybe I don't know. Uh, I just felt like you you did manage to get rid of an enemy, uh, but it was a pretty big cost to yourself. Interesting. I mean, that's how I felt. I mean, this, this would probably maybe make more sense. Say if it was like end game, and you know the team was breaking, then I could probably see that. You know, it's it's definitely not something one should pine for as a general rule of thumb. Oh, is Memes mm. going to... And Egg takes it, nicely done. Go back and look at the Berserker. Um... Round 12. Ah, damn. Oh, unfavorable trades again. Good to do this.
You don't want to hear memes. Like, you need to get the absolute fuck away from me when I'm here. There's dodge cancels there coming out. And I should hit two people with his dodge. Like, I mean, look at that. that tra that's the, the danger of trading with um, Berserker and... And that's the counter. If somebody, if you somebody guard breaks you, and they're expecting the berserker zone, then they can just not counter guard break, and then that prevents the the thing coming out. But it also means that you you're liable to just eat a heavy attack if the if the opponents pay attention to that. So a good a berserker with good reactions, you can start your zone on reaction to the counter guard break. Oh, so you could have zoned there. You would have been dead. You gotta be careful with that. All right, so this is probably this is a, a match. I'm gonna this is the first ten. This is a match round here. That's a free kick of non-target swapped light attack. <laughs> oh no! I'm literally I can't block lights. Thirty FPS moment. Yeah, he has like he has like crazy recovery if you uh, if he hits attack on the wall. Mm -hmm. Uh. Oh, uh, Span, I think Stag was asking something in the voice text. I think he was asking if you could hear him, but, uh... Yeah, I, I, I don't yeah, know. I couldn't hear him. <laughs> and, I don't know what happened after. We figured that out already. Mm -hmm. I oh, trade. something misconfigured. <sighs> I got no indicator. Oh my god. With Garbrake getting punished with a zone, nice one. Memes sitting at 99% revenge. Will he manage to get? <laughs> there we go. That's the danger of you got to be careful with your tags. If you're not being tagged, you can feed revenge. This is now a very roll catch on reaction from Blitz with the uh, top four light heavy. It's got incredible range and it's really good at catching these kind of things. So, gotta be super careful. Oh, great zone from Egg. Oh, Nick takes it. Incredible stuff. I remember one of the first like oh, oh. style things we did was like trying to like showing off ganking and anti ganking, and Egg was there and it was. It's impossible to gank him because he's so good at anti ganking on his Kensei. <laughs> we have another match round. <laughs> Zerk, obviously, we didn't mention he's, he's got parry punish, which is actually really nice to use um, in. I think you can dodge cancel after the parry punish, right? Um, and that is, it's fast, so it actually lets you get damage off after a after a parry, which often is you can. Ah, uh, yeah. So you got a, you got a little, you got a little reckless, a little bit there, a little eager. There we go. And yes, we didn't mention your punishes. You can you either use a parry repost, but you can also get your zone off punish, which off a heavy parry, which allows you to set up your gank <laughs> from right. from there. Okay, so. <laughs> I think that's a pretty good time. There you go, you finally got it. <laughs> there we go, yeah. yeah. There we go, see that's... Go ahead, this go ahead. Beauty. Go ahead. Go ahead. Alright, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I can't. What do you know about not catching rolls? Go ahead. Go ahead. What, what, what do you know about having a 160 MS reaction time? Go ahead, buddy. Oh, you got me there. Well, what do you, what do you know about McDonald's Fine. fashion? <laughs> You spin chop monster in it up. Watch the tag them, Blitz. Alright, nicely done. Egg's got his revenge. I will watch this last one and then I'll and then I will uh stop by dating and then in the stream. Weird targeting going there. Hey, hey, go ahead. Go ahead. Oops. <laughs> Fucking hate you. <laughs> I'll take that trade. Oh, God. oh, I can't get I freaking body blocked. 
He won't do it. Please, please. I didn't think he was gonna throw it. Boom! Be dangerous to roll away from a berserker, but Egg is trying to pressure revives here. Okay, for once I didn't have the reaction time of a snail and actually GB'd for that. There we go. <laughs> Four dodge roll, catch on reaction. Okay, so that's enough from me. I'm gonna stop spectating now. Hey. All right. Josh. Well, Josh. It, it was so great, you know, to to have this and go over the basics. And you know, I, I think wow. you know, I speak for a lot of. No, I I don't really speak for a lot of people, but right, right. you know, I for one actually appreciated the topics that went on today. Well, thank you much. Um, well, big thanks to Barrett for coming and joining us, and I think we should stag if you can do this Sunday oh. raid over to Northern Rush. Why is oh. my I'm Evan Jib? What is going on with my game? Can you send that Twitch into my? Oh, oh. oh. I'm to get it on my Let me get the link Echo. to him. I, I just need Echo. the channel name. Echo. Oh no. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> Looks like Egg doesn't need me. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> nah, bro. Egg has got Link this. In voice yeah. So go um, ahead. The hard carries. That's, what, that's, that's all you hear when we're doing an analysis TV2 so they go with our buddies. Go ahead. Buddy, buddy, go ahead. Go ahead. All right. <laughs> all right. Thank you much, everybody, for joining us. Right. Peace out now. Mm -hmm. uh, you can send a raid over to Northern Rush, who is currently streaming... The Give me some YouTube lights. Cool. Comment. Um, we'll go and have a watch of that. It should be fun. All right. Take care, guys. Bye. Hey, have a good, good evening. Oh, it's evening over good there. Yeah. Good evening.